Hello YouTube and welcome to another video by Tech Tech Shila. Today we are going to learn about sharding. But before we kick things off, if you are new to our channel, a very warm welcome to you guys from our entire Tech Tech Shila team. A little bit about us. So we are a group of Fang engineers who release weekly videos on system design and coding interview and helping you guys to be better prepared for your next tech company interview. So do make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that little bell icon to never miss an update from us. So off to the video now. So if you are anyone like us, you may hear, have you tried sharding your database thrown around a lot in the meetings? At least we do in our companies. Since we usually work with huge traffic and massive data set, sharding is relatively a familiar concept in the database world to distribute your massive data set into smaller chunks and then effectively spread them across a fleet of server nodes or cluster for better choice of word. You may ask that this concept sounds almost similar to horizontal partitioning or horizontal scaling. In which case you guessed it right, that sharding is nothing but horizontal partitioning in disguise. Let's try to understand this by taking a real simple example in our case. This will also help you to develop the intuition behind sharding. So let's say that you have a little of 12 puppies. Now these pups are hungry and you want to feed them. So you get a ball out and uh, a bag of dog food and place that ball in front of all these hungry pups. There is some dog food contention going on here. Everyone wants to get a bite, so no one ends up eating anything. This is what we call uncharted eating. Now, you got an idea that why don't we split the same ball of dog food into four different walls? That way, all your pup traffic can distribute and everyone gets to eat their fair share. So this is what we call sharded eating. Now, as we understand the basic difference between sharding and not sharding, we will have no trouble understanding the same concept when translated over to the database world. So let's go over the agenda for today's video in a jiffy. To make it simpler for you guys to jump in between the video, we have also included the timestamps in the description of this video, just in case you are conversant with some of the topics and want to brush up on others. First, we already have seen the that what sharding is on a higher level and checked out how to develop the intuition for sharding. Next, we will look how to shard and approach it by looking at how to structure the shards and what different sharding strategies we can apply to not fall into common traps. In the end, we will also explore some of the techniques that can help us not have data loss while applying sharding strategies. So let's get started. Now that we have some familiarity with sharding concept on our word in general, let's see that how does it translate to the database world? As we have mentioned that it is used to horizontally partition the database across multiple database nodes by the way, if you are curious in knowing more about the difference between horizontal versus vertical partitioning or scaling, you can do so in our short video that we have released on relational versus NoSQL databases for which you can find the link in the description. Back to the sharding. So after all this, you may be asking that tech, how do we actually horizontally partition the data in a reliable and durable way? So here we use the primary key or partition key to identify the partition or shard that should contain or store the data entity. There goes a lot of science in choosing the best partition key. So let's look at how to pick that next. So designing partition key effectively means to design our shards structure. And when it comes to structure our shards, you need to take care of two things, the optimal size of the shards and the optimal boundaries of shards. You may be wondering that why the size and the boundaries are so important. So we need to understand that we can't just blindly tell that X data should reside in first partition and Y data should reside in second partition because A, this won't scale and B, we might run into a lot of issues to reliably fetch and store the data. This whole process of deciding which shard that the data goes to should be automated. So if the size of the shard is too small, our database node might not be able to contain the entire data. And if it is too big, then we are just wasting excess space on each shard. So optimal size for shard is important, but more important than size is the boundaries of shards. And that is for two reasons. First is cross partition operations, which means if our partitions boundaries are inefficient, there could be a lot of operations across partitions. Like let's say you want to fetch a user's data that comprises of fields like name, age, address, and photo. But let's say user's photo is on a different partition. So it means that for each user's fetch operation, we are essentially making calls to two partitions hence wasted cross partition operations. Second problem is hot partitions, which means that somehow all our data that is needed for some X operation is present on the same partition. 
and that database node is getting hammered with a lot of read and write operations, hence causing hot partitions. This is a common scenario in Instagram where a celebrity's uploaded photo gets shared or seen by a lot of users. So Instagram essentially works with some sort of sharding strategy to not have a hot partition. And we went over this scenario in our Instagram system design interview video. So if you're interested in learning more about that design, follow the link in the description or you can also click here. So now it should be apparent that why selecting a good partition key or an optimal shard size and boundary is necessary. To summarize, sharding is not a silver bullet to scaling challenges. It presents a path forward, but that could easily become a recipe for disaster if not put much thought process. The advantage of sharding is that we can keep on using cheap commodity hardware and horizontally scale our database fleet or cluster, not ever having a scaling challenge ever as we can rely on sharding strategy to get, take care of it for us. But if not done properly, we can see massive downtimes as the data is not present on a single database node, but spread across a cluster which means that there could be huge operational costs to manage this extra migration. On top of that, there could be significant latency impact if we ever run into hot partitions or cross partition issues as we have seen in the previous slide. So a good rule of thumb is to start early whenever you feel that you might need sharding in future. For example, you just launched your startup. You have probably thousand users at the time. Use RDBMS, but now a month went by and you are seeing a lot of uh, customers coming in and at least 100k users per hour and you are seeing exponential growth since you just received a hefty seed fund from VCs. So instead of cutting a Jira ticket to solve it in a month, prioritize to shard your database right now. Just to keep it easy to understand, let's look at some of the good and bad examples of partition key. We took this slide from AWS DynamoDB page, which most of you know that it is the NoSQL database uh, offering by Amazon Web Services to store the key value and document data in the database. You can also find the link to the AWS doc in the description as well. So in this table, you can see that a user ID is a good partition key since we uniquely locate a record for a user between different partitions. And it will also not cause other problems like cross partition or hot partitions. Where having a status code as a partition key would be a bad idea as it might cause the hot partition problem by hitting a particular partition repeatedly for getting records that contain a particular status code. I think this helps us a lot in understanding how sharding works in principle or in theory. Now would be the right time to introduce how we can leverage some of the sharding strategies to effectively shard for us. So first strategy is algorithmic sharding. So basically here we are wrapping our sharding hash function in in our database code to correctly identify the partition where the data will be written to or read from. Advantages is that we have more control on how we shard since we literally write our sharding code. But bad side would be that whenever our sharding code, we need to make sure that all the hosts got the code or otherwise there could be a stale host that can cause write or read problems by writing to or reading from incorrect partition. Best example for Algorithmic sharding comes to my mind as consistent hashing. As in the case of memcached, we use algorithmic sharding. Luckily, we have released a video on consistent hashing as well, which you can find the link in the description, and that will help you to explore this concept further. Alternative to algorithmic sharding is dynamic sharding, where instead of shipping your sharding strategy or code to each database interfacing machine, you simply have offload the work of sharding onto a separate service that we call locator service whose sole job is to take a partition or primary key and see where to write to or read from data from the cluster of the database node. This is very sim simple concept in principle and almost all modern databases provide this such as MongoDB, SDFS and Apache HBase. But with dynamic sharding comes another problem that this locator service becomes a single point of failure. Let's say that this node goes down and none of the clients know how to get the data or what if the hash function goes haywire on this machine for which there are other theoretical solutions to make it more robust. But as long as you're not working on the actual design of NoSQL databases, it is not worth exploring it further. Just remember that modern day NoSQL databases come with dynamic sharding prepackaged. Focus your energy in designing good partition key. Next sharding strategy is entity group sharding. As we briefly mentioned earlier in the video that partitioning comes in both flavors horizontal as well as vertical. So for vertical partitioning, that is usually required for relational database systems. You group together your related entities closely and put them on same partition. So now you have this cluster of entities 
grouped together and spread across different server nodes. Some of the examples for sharded databases are Cassandra, HBase, HDFS, and MongoDB. And some of the non-sharded databases are SQLite, Redis, and Memcached, where we can shard Memcached by employing algorithmic sharding, and also Zookeeper. All right, so time for a fun little brain exercise on what we have learned so far on sharding. So let's say that we are given a key value data store, which stores the login information when a particular user logs in. So for example, a sample tuple of data could be like a name, email, and logged in time. So you might have guessed it already that, that you have a partition key to store this data in a NoSQL database. So take your time and think of a solution and you can pause the video here and take your time. I hope you did your due diligence. So let's see how would we have come up with our partition key in our case for this data. So we can use the name, but since name is not unique, would be a bad candidate for primary key or partition key. So we would not be using name as our partition key. Uh, we can also use email ID as we can expect that it to be unique for each user, but it could be too bulky to hashify or like create encrypted hash function for this sort of key in our case. So what would be ideal is to use a user ID for our partition key. And we can assign it to be a random key generator to create user IDs on the fly. In addition to this, we can also use logged in timestamp as our sort key or range key, which will help us to query this database efficiently. More on that later in a diff different video, since that is a whole concept in itself and does not relate too much to the actual partition key design. So we will not be covering that in this video, but do let us know in down in the comment section that if you want us to cover that in a separate video or not. So one potential downside of sharding could be data loss, but honestly, that is true for any non sharded database as well, although to a lesser impacts, but still a danger. So what to do and how to handle data losses. So immediately a solution to data loss that comes to my mind is replication. And that is true in the case of sharding as well. But how do we apply? It might change a little bit from case to case. So first let's look at the master slave replication approach. This is the easiest approach of all where we have a master, which takes the input right loads and then it further fans out all those updates to slave nodes. This is pretty basic, but effective. But again, we can see that this master node can pose a single point of failure, or there could be inconsistency issues as well, where the updates aren't propagated to slave nodes when the read traffic hit to any of these in future, for which we can employ peer-to-peer -peer replication, where we can have all the server nodes sharing the responsibility of incoming writes or updates, and then later sharing their nodes on what updated so the other nodes can update their snapshots as well. This is good to solve the problem of not having a single point of failure in as in case of master slave replication, but it poses its own sets of, of challenges, which is that you can get data inconsistency issues where let's say write happened to this node and user immediately tried to access the information and that read request landed on this stale copy of the host. So the inconsistent data might be returned. And this is what we call eventual consistency, where consistency between different nodes takes a little bit of time. We can employ a strongly consistency model, but that would be expensive and a little slower. So again, trade-offs need to be made. This brings us to the end of the video. We hope this video helped to understand what sharding is and why sharding is necessary and how you can efficiently shard your data. Remember, sharding can solve a bunch of problems and scaling challenges if done right or it can also present nightmares if not done right. Key is to sim design your partition key with utmost care after analyzing the data access pattern and traffic load patterns. And if you guys feel that we can improve this video in any possible way, do let us know down in the comment section. Also, if you have any suggestions for our future videos, please let us know in the comment section as well. And if you like this video, help us spread the word by liking and sharing this video on your social channels. We really appreciate your continued support and constructive feedback in producing better content. If you guys prefer to read the content in this video, we also have a blog format for this and we have provided the link in the description or you can also go to our website www.techtextula.com. Thanks for watching this video and all the best for your interviews.